am speaking this morning to the legendary Ben Mahaka. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks a lot. How are you? I am well. I'm tired, but I am well. Tired from being busy or tired from being tired? Like No, your time? tired from just constantly moving, being on the move, okay, doing okay. things. No, doing things is good. <laughs> yes. Doing things is very good. Um, yes. So, look, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've had to summarize you mm -hmm. and, 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 and put you at a point where everybody definitely remembers mm -hmm. you. But there's been a lot that's happened since mm -hmm. then. Um, and just maybe take us through that very quick timeline of where you've, the spaces you've moved through since. Okay, well, um, I think just by the nature of the work, Studio 263 acting mm. is what I'm known for because it's the most visible mm. uh, part of my job. But m the bulk of my work is behind the camera. Mm. And so I am primarily um, a documentary filmmaker, media consultant, working with all sorts of people, you know, the uh, development agencies, mm. government departments, um, yeah, everybody. Mm. I, I've even worked with uh, ZTN. When you guys started off, mm. I took part in the training of uh, the print journalists mm. transitioning to um, to visual storytelling. So yeah, right. that is what I've been doing. And um, the visible stuff is, um, I think everybody talks about, you know, I do a Pamoyo, mm. Gaza. Uh, those are the stuff in front of the camera, but a lot of it has been behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, behind the, the scenes developing content that is, I think a lot of it educational mm -hmm. um, in Zimbabwe, around the region, and, um, and also sort of like showing the success of different uh, projects, you know, some of them long term, five, mm -hmm. 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, you have to say in show in five minutes, how this thing works through a community mm -hmm. who benefited, what went wrong, and what can be improved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what shapes your passions, Ben? Um, I think primarily good storytelling. You know, you, every time you hear a story that sticks mm -hmm. and then you say, okay, how do I translate this into something that can be shared with a, a wider uh, audience? Mm -hmm. And then, but the other side of that, the other important part of that is technical excellence because mm -hmm. you can take a good story and butcher it, right. you know, through bad sound, you know, burnt out mm. pictures mm. Um, and you know maybe an ugly crew environment where the story just doesn't get a chance to gel because th th that toxic environment translates into bad acting it translates into you know lackluster short choices those kind of, that kind of stuff so yeah good storytelling through understanding the story the 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 world that you 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 characters live in mm. and technical excellence mm. yeah mm. now we you know our um mm. our film and television industry has transitioned mm -hmm. quite a bit from yeah. when you started with 263 yeah. um and as you're saying even on a technical aspect a lot mm. of those things have improved uh, but we are still in a bit of a fragmented um industry mm. how then do filmmakers ensure that they are meeting all those elements um mm. while not in, entirely breaking the bank because good equipment is expensive guys okay so i think the first cog in that in that gear set mm. is uh policy mm. so you need government and corporates and uh, our neighbors to come together so government and the filmmakers need to come up with a film policy mm. and we're in the process of working through that with uh, the national arts council i'm part of the the committee that is helping to craft that uh, film policy. Mm. Because with a film policy, a, a, a well-defined film environment, you can now work with um, filmmakers from other countries right. because you need to have those, those agreements at national level right. for you to be able to access a fund uh, maybe from you know, the region, maybe from, uh, you know, Europe, those kinds of things need to be put together, put in place to, to make that possible. Mm. But the other part where I think we've been doing well uh, for ourselves is we've had some really innovative, hardworking um, trailblazers in our industry, you know, and I'll give you um, John Jago, for example. Yes. So with, with very little, he has managed to understand the importance of collaborative work and bringing together friends, 
Mm. And um, they, everybody brings in their expertise and the equipment and whatnot, and they put together really good films that can stand up against international content. Mm. So they've shown the importance of collaborative work because the, the challenge that we have is people have equipment. The equipment right now is not that expensive. You mm. can shoot something really good on an iPhone. Mm. But if Ben Mahaka says, you know, I'm going to write, direct, produce, film mm. this thing, you see the filmmakers fatigue yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in, in the in output. The, yeah, yeah. So um, it, understanding that you are not an island, you need to listen, mm. you know, to hear, not to answer, mm. you know, when you're working with others. And, uh, yeah, and don't take the money and run because the other yeah. challenge is, you know, money comes through. And a you few are worried guys, about your tomatoes in your fridge. Well, Instead it's usually <laughs> a BMW or a Fit or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, you mm. know, the development mm. community mm. Has, has, is, is very um, willing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at, especially as you mentioned, um, the documentary side mm -hmm. of things, which is extremely important, you mm -hmm. know, documenting what's going on yeah. around. Um, why, why is corporate taking so long to come on board as well? Because I think it, we, mm -hmm. need, we need both ends. We need both ends supporting... Mm -hmm all spheres of the industry for it to actually be viable. Why do you think this side is taking so long to come on? I think corporate um, is shaped by a culture of, um, of caution, almost fear mm. to go out. So you have people who, you know, have the responsibility to market products, for example, for, and they want to go with the tried and tested thing. And the worst thing is, when they see something blow up, after it's blown up, then they, they all to. rush in. Mm. You know, and I remember um, getting calls from all sorts of corporate entities, big banks and whatnot, around the, the fifth episode of Wadua Pamoya. Mm. We want to partner, we want to whatnot, whatnot, you know. And of course, it wasn't my thing, you know, it was the young guys mm. from uh, College Central. So I would refer them to these guys, but also say, you need to understand they're coming in, but get your money's worth because yeah. uh, you invested your sweat and blood without any backup. Absolutely. And, and now that yeah. it's blown up, they want to Exactly, take yeah. Away. With the development community, the money is there, but I think there's this culture of, you know, wanting to shape the story so much. So mm -hmm. you, you have technocrats talking about wanting to force technical issues that they understand and that they thrive on mm. onto a story when the creative can see that it doesn't fit. yes this story is really in this young lady right let's look at her and her community and whatnot but you're told yeah you know we need to have uh, <laughs> this you know, element yes, that element that element that element and it, and it really kills it, yeah. 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 I so, get that. I mm. get that. Um, okay, I've had you very serious for the mm. past few minutes. You had a documentary done about you. Did you, mm. did you ever in your life, like this was a short little mm. thingy then, uh, did you ever in your life, as you were going through and getting mm. into, think that this would be the point you'd get at? No, I, I, I never did. I think I, I've been sort of like hanging on and watching for most of my um, my life, especially when my work became visible because, mm -hmm. you know, my most comfor comfortable space is behind the camera. So when people start recognizing you and you are pretty much an introvert, mm -hmm. you have to learn to interact with people on those terms because you can no longer hide. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, <laughs> But you see, a camera is a very good place to hide behind, especially, you know, these studio cameras. Yes, are the big yes. No, you... <laughs> Maya and Norris do a lot behind the cameras that nobody yes. can see and they're yeah. so free. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, where do we find you now? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you working on as, as, we, as we wrap up? Uh, what, what I'm working on is really, at this point in my career, I really want to be, to have a meaningful influence on policy, on the direction of the film industry mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe because I have seen what works, what doesn't work. Right. I have seen the things that people struggle with mm -hmm. without enough information and really 
being a part of the policy framework building is important to me. Mm. But I also am taking time to build up stories that leverage what I've learned. So, you know, the, the best actors that I've come across, mm. the best locations that I have come across. That means Chipinge for me. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and right now, what I'm really working on putting together is something that is, you know, an, a national film mm. that is technically excellent, that is filmed in Chipinge with the best uh, talent from Harare, from the music industry, from the film industry, from Lawayo, from all over. And putting together something, a, a relatable story that travels well, so that if you, if you show it in Cannes, it, it's a story that people feel. Right. You know, if you show it you know, in the Americas, it's a story that people, if you show it in a, at an African film festival, it's a story that people vibe with. Mm -hmm. So, and trying to bring on board all the best technical people that I've worked with. And it's not something that I want to rush, it's something that I want to, you know, like you say, bring in corporate, mm -hmm. bring in government, bring in the development sector, but with them understanding this is our story. Right. And um, it's a Real human story. Yes, yeah, it. exactly. Love that. Mm -hmm. Ben, but don't please don't take five years. Like, uh, we're, we're waiting. We're ready for it. So please don't take five years. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Next year, I hope. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us this morning. And